Knock on wood, because I don't think I'll drop a frame all day long. Alright, smoke out from the Hala Ares side. Couple smokes purchased up by Navi as well. More than likely, they're just, you know, backpacking those and resetting the cooldown such that they can get as many smokes out from this Roger uh, Enchantress as possible. You fear on the Wyvern. Smoked up, gonna get down some deep vision, it seems. Over nearby the shrine, spot out early rotation. See who's nearby if they can make an attempt on first blood. But it is only himself and the Bloodseeker for the time being. Roger, Blightstone, Orb of Venom early. It looks like he's laning soon. Like, he'll probably grab a creep or two and get on his way into the lane. Anya. Nice deep ward. This actually gives a good amount of vision here in the mid lane. Of course, not going to give you anything with respect to the runes, but anytime a support rotates in from the radiant side, the dire should be aware and it catches all of this. We can even just give you the dire fog there. So all of this spot in the mid lane, as long as she's not completely under her tower, or Dendi's not completely under his tower, I should say, the dire will be aware of it. And the radiant sentry committed, so maybe a bit of a false positive for navi's side is that there's no vision on this side of the map but is some just I'm over to, to the east so we'll have the regular two to bounty split and navi's lane or dendy's lane currently blocked up by roger on the other side or blocking as well dendy lets one go by and it's gonna be up on the templar assassin's hill Already talked about how this match is a bit skew in the TA's favor, but it is level one where Dendi can trade a bit before uh, this refraction is skilled up. Uh, Dendi just by virtue of pure skill holding his own in this lane so far. Veno, bottom lane, gonna get harassed up by Seneca. Looks like the second Thunder Strike he's used on this Veno. We'll force it back. General. Has already used up the cogs and will get Arctic burned up. He's going to be blood raged as well, taking quite a bit of damage. We'll go for the double duration tango. Meanwhile, Roger in towards the mid lane. Going to make Velocia's life a bit of a living hell. And then the, as we mentioned before, does need this attention. Wow, with the Blightstone and the creep tanking the tower forces out the fairy fire. Roger is forced to back here as he's only level one. EA level 2 does get the refraction off, but that may just expire before she's able to use the charges. And meanwhile, bottom lane, did I catch it? I'm going to count it from you guys. The chosen one, the first to go down. Seneco does fall thereafter, uh, and but he is denied by Crystallize. So nicely played from Navi. They get the first blood and no gold goes back the way of that Venomancer. Dendi in the mid lane, six to five to the four to one of his laning counterpart, which is a really good sign for Navi here early on that the Dendi Storm Spirit's having a good time in this mid lane. Even the Sand King making a rotation over from Hala Airy side, but is scouted by this Radiant Observer Ward. So Dendi feels more than safe to play this way. Really not feeling threatened right now. Burrow Strike coming through, trying to take out the creep. Well, at least stop the channeling for now. And it seems like Chosen One, even with Boots first, has already made his retreat to the jungle. So, again, almost by virtue of just pure skill, Na'Vi really getting a lot out of these lanes. Dire side in mid lane, but the creep right on the Sand King. Dendi going to turn into him. Sand King still level 1. Dendi takes a bit of damage, but feeling, again, pretty safe in this lane. General posturing up aggressively in the top lane. 8 and 3 on his CS on the clockwork here. And now Roger on the enchant just going to join him. He finds the Bloodseeker inside the cogs. Soaks up most of this battery assault. Will do a good amount of damage. Burns out some mana as well. Roger in nearby but doesn't have any sort of disable creep. One more right click. Not there for General as the Arctic Burn is there in time. But just for General to be able to do this and Retreat off and salve up is a good sign for Na'Vi, though. Rotations inbound from the Sand King. General in trouble. Ping comes out on the Sand King. He's no... Gets bounced back by the Cogs. And this uh, Radiant Observer Ward giving the timing to General. He's able to Cog salve up to the west as well. Na'Vi looking good thus far. Level 2 up on Roger. He's holding a skill point at this time. Just in case he needs the heal. 
and we go back towards the mid lane. 18 10 denies on the Dendi Storm Spirit here. He's in a little bit of trouble though. He needs to be careful not to be in that side blades range. And he does get his salve off. And while top lane for the moment has been abandoned, Roger farming up a bit in the jungle. The Venomancer are doing the same. Only 5 CS on this Venom. We mentioned the boots first build, and yet retreating to the jungle. Just not very synergistic play to item build there. And that is going to hurt the Chosen Ones scaling here in the early game. EA forced to base here by Dendi. Sand King rotating in just to soak some of this mid lane experience. And was thinking about the rune, just takes a peek. Now we'll get near tower to get some of this experience. Should get near this level 2 here with this range creep dying. And does end up picking that up. Meanwhile, Seneco finds out with a haste rune. The Venomancer has vision because of the Thunderstrike. One more right click is there. Seneco finds the kill. Roger, top lane as well. Maybe looking to wrap here with General. Did use his battery assault though. Will catch the Arctic Burn as well as the Splinter Blast. He's been blood raged up. Looking to turn. Charm is there and the Stomp as well. Beautifully played by Roger. General with the big right click from the blood rage. And Roger the one to pick up the kill. Now the Bloodseeker could be in a little bit of trouble. They get the Battery Assault off. Bloodrite is there, but they should be able to chase him down. Units come inbound, but they're still able to get close. One more Battery Assault tick. Double kill for Navi squad in the top lane. And five minutes in, four to nil for the fan favorite squad on the Radiant side. Dendi's picked up his level 6, 14 denies, 30 last hits. A full level ahead of this Templar Assassin in this game one. And the early game going swimmingly. We talked about the comfort level on these heroes for Navi's side. And it is showing. Roger has picked up the Untouchable, but could be in a lot of trouble here. Splinter Blast available. Thrown out onto the creep. Roger will fall. Navi have General inbound, but the creeps are there. And the Stomp actually keeps him back. Now he could be in a little bit of trouble with the Blood Rage coming through. Nice set of cogs, though, from General. Will keep him safe. Easy. He says Rocket Flare flies out. And with the vision from the creep, they'll get the kill on the Sand King. Ay, 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 ay. Navi ahead in this one considerably. We're already looking at a 3K net worth lead six minutes in and near the same for experience. Tranquil Boots already up on general. He's going to be able to get in close for those battery assaults. More often than not with that extra move speed, Plague Ward actually doesn't scout with that nerf to the vision on the Plague Wards recently. Does not scout Seneco. Seneco has Kinetic Field and he's got a Glimpse. Swarm flies through, Crystallize, going to be able to get in front of this Venomancer and Chosen One will just accept his fate. Meanwhile, top lane, the Bloodseeker goes down and this is getting stompy in the early game in the favor of Na'Vi. Roger rotating through. He's got a net and an Alpha Wolf and turning tail and running is this Wyvern. Dendi with an Arcane Rune. Just going to eliminate this wave top lane and look to put some pressure into this tower. Dendi could be in a little bit of trouble. Is a little bit low. One bottle charge available. No rupture though on this Bloodseeker. Dendi could be burrowed up here in trouble. Blood Rite is there as well. Arctic Burn looks like they'll just let Dendi go from the Navi side. Little bit of confidence from them, and it looks like they may get this tower denied as well. With the creeps though, Roger able to secure the last hit. Nice micro there from him. Meanwhile, the Disruptor does find some space mid lane, so they get the tower last hit, and they give a little bit of space to Suneko. Hit with a Gale bot lane is crystallized. It feels like a level one Gale, and it certainly is. Bit of a jungling oriented build here You'll often we see two two and then a max on the plague wards on the venos most recently but here just the one point in gale so crystallize easily able to shrug that off as a perseverance as well already here 53 cs for dendy 52 for crystallize and the bloodseeker already with a couple of deaths here one two and oh uh, is low on the CS. Meanwhile, Dendi does find a kill mid lane. That's going to be on the Wyvern. And General Top with the Enchantress. They'll find a kill. He uses his first hook shot for that one. So that will be off the table for the next little bit. But maybe they look to wrap here mid lane. Dire, uh, dire Observer Ward, excuse me, though, will scout out Roger. And maybe the TA backs alongside the Sand King. Doing a good job of not letting Navi know that they're aware the Enchantress is there. But still playing safe. Ace room, bottom lane, Dendi. 
does bottle that up. Meanwhile, Crystallize putting some punishment in to this bottom lane tier one. All things coming up, Navi here. Eight minutes in, four top beholders of net worth lead are all on the Navi side. Earn Tranquils. Building into the blade mail for general. Anything else big in the way of items? Not really yet. Perseverance, as I mentioned before, on Crystallize. Looks like we may see Midas's on the Hala side. Bloodseeker certainly makes sense. TA a little bit more peculiar with her ability to farm gotcha. stacks. You often just go straight in for the damage, but it has been a rough early game, as we, as we mentioned previously. Bottom lane, Sineko and Crystallize. Putting in work here, and with a Dire Glyph available, this may take a moment or two. But actually, Dire Glyph? Dire Glyph, not Pop Disaster. Or Hala Ares. And Crystallize the one to pick up that last hit. Dendi, meanwhile, doing a bit of farming. has Still has that Haste Rune, as we mentioned earlier. Clarity queued up. Does have the one point in the Vortex, just for that extra bit of Disable Crystallize. Shikuching through bottom lane. There are a lot of Plague Wards here. He throws out the Swarm, does connect onto the Venno, does not connect on the Wyvern, and for now, he will back off. Splinter Blast will fly through and connect. But with the Perseverance, as aforementioned, he should be just fine. So Nako, near level 6, and these two heroes right on top of one each other without knowing it. Wyvern yet to be scouted. Level 4 at this point. Disruptor near his level 6, as I just mentioned. The Nako with that all-important Static Storm inbound. Triple stack of Ancients being farmed here by the TA, who does pick up the Aquila. Maybe sold that Glove of Haste. You can see it, the Dendi though, gonna look for the TP out and should not be successful. Thought he might be, but the level two Meld Strike with the Blood Rage on Dendi, able to finish him off, and that is a big kill for the TA, who pull vaults her way up to third on the net worth chart. So Nako does ding that level 6. Crystallize just free farming bottom lane. Almost level 9 on the Weaver. Two mid laners, of course, with the extra creep. The only ones to surpass him. Even General is level 8 on the clock. General going in with the hook shot. He is going to find one. That's the TA farming stack. Static Storm is there. Poison Nova does fly out. General looking for the TP out. And a bit of a weakness of this Hala Ares draft is a lack of disable. Only the Sand King Burrow Strike. Now Roger, who's already level 6, trying to run away. Has the impetus. Has some creeps flying through. And now Crystallize joining Shikuchi. One more right click. Finishes off the Chosen One. Meanwhile, the Sand King Sentry is there. Seneko could be in a little bit of trouble with the Plague Wars. Gets his Thunder Strike off, though. Impetus flying through as well. Caustic Finale may end up killing off Seneko here and actually is unable to do so he makes it away scot free everyone from Navi survives General's hook shot well, I may be aside from Dendi early on but General's hook shot facilitating a big team fight win there for Navi you get a three for nil 1200 gold exchange 1500 experience go their way as well crystallize looking in bottom lane Going for that Lincolns, which certainly makes sense against the Bloodseeker and the Wyvern here. For the twins. Meanwhile, Roger getting a work top lane. Got a medallion already. No boots is a luxury only heroes like Enchantress can afford with that base 340 MS. But 1700 gold in the bank for Roger. Meanwhile, bottom lane smoke up from Hala Ares. Going to be a difficult kill. They'll look for it. They get off the Burrow Strike. Will the Blood Red be there in time? It is. And it looks like Crystallize may just end up dropping. Tries to stick up, but does not get the time lapse off. And the Static Storm essentially wasted here for Navi Squad. It's a big commitment, though. They lose a Tier 2 in the top lane. In the meantime, that's a full Blade Mail picked up now. Just in a moment by General having that space to farm. And Hala Ares will end up shrining up as a squad. Then the mid lane is going to be able to avoid the Splinter Blast. We will get the deny off. Then he will be forced to zip on his way out. But now Hookshot back through General is going to find with the Rocket Flare and the Battery Assault. The Winter Wyvern Blood Rite is not going to be there to try and back off Navi. And now Dendi can continue to press forward. Oh, the Epicenter channeled and, and stopped by the Sand King. 
Navi, unaware of that, more than likely, but they can continue to press forward here. No hook shot though. They'll look at the Roche Pit. They do have the swarm available, the medallion that I spoke of earlier. Crystallize and Dendi. We'll get in to do some damage, and the uh, Roger Enchantress can just tank this up with three levels in Untouchable. It is a full Solar Crest, excuse me, at this point. Not a medallion. Thanks. 13 minutes in, 14 minutes in. It's unbelievable that we are only 14 minutes into the game at this point. 10k uh, lead in the way of net worth, 6k in the way of experience for Na'Vi. Blade Mail up on General. Just a recipe away from the Lincolns is Crystallize. So no Dragon Lance, no Deso. Very safe build I'll from Crystallize against the Bloodseeker and the Wyvern. So again, we're going to have to see, you know, that Burrow Strike Blood Right combo for them to have any chance to bring Do down Crystallize. General finds two with his Rocket Flare, thinking about a hook, but it's actually all five heroes bot lane. Taneko could be the first to catch a little bit of danger, and he does get the Static Storm off before dying, but doesn't latch anyone in it. Now General kind of stuck in his own cogs, but he gets the Blade Mail off, doing damage there. They'll find the Bloodseeker. Winter's Curse is there, but it's only onto one. That's Dendi, who has Aegis. Chosen One looking to TP out. General looking to find more. Will be able to find the Winter Wyvern. Right clicks will find. Now the Sand King out in No Man's Land. Tries to burrow into the cogs, but will just burrow to his own death. And a three-for-one trade going the way of Na'Vi. Templar Assassin TPs out towards the mid lane but they get the two supports and the safe lane one position blood seeker and we'll continue to press forward here that is nearly the full lincoln's they'll also look to defend mid lane seneco does have a glimpse but no vision uphill as the ta with a relatively early blink all things considered how badly that uh, lane stage went uh, is going to be able to make it out makes a lot of sense having this blink you can kind of soak the first couple of ticks of uh, Thunderstrike and make it out of vision range so that you don't get glimpsed. Very big threat is this Disruptor. But there's always the Rocket Flare for more vision, the hook shot in from General, which he's looking for right now, it seems. Wyvern. To be in a bit of trouble, but I don't think the Radiant sees this Wyvern, and it doesn't. So General kind of just waiting uphill as Roger pushes in for someone to look to defend this bottom lane uh, from an impromptu position. Blessings. Stupendous! And it looks like, for now, Hala Ares will not bite. Mid lane, Navi will encroach upon this tier 2, which is at full health at the moment, but it doesn't seem like Hala Ares have any intent of defending this tower. They don't really have anyone to initiate. It's really, you know, on the... With the no blink dagger on the Sand King, it's really kind of on the Winter's Curse fly in over the tree line. So it's a very difficult scenario to pull off. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Seneco is going to find the Chosen One. General inbound, gets a two-man Poison Nova off, but there's no real follow-up. Seneco will look for the TP out and make it back to safety. And the hookshot in from General will find themselves another kill and likely another tower. It may be looking to defend top, though. TP in from General, he does throw the Rocket Flare out. Maybe that alone is enough to back out the Dire Squad, and it seems like that's the case. Crystallize will jump out and bait in front. Hookshot on the east actually does whiff from General. And Crystallize unable to find anything. Now bottom lane, in goes the Winter Wyvern. Gets the immediate Cold Embrace off. Good reaction time there. And now the Blood Rite with the Burrow Strike could mean Dendi's in trouble. He does still have Aegis though. And they expend, excuse me, everything on Dendi here. So he should be able to just make it away to safety. And he does. They do get the Aegis, but that just allows them to continue to press forward. Now with no Rupture available. Winter's Curse is online, but no mana to use it just yet. Now General looking to find the TA. She blinks over to the east. Urn is there. Now Dendi jumping forward. Not going to be able to blink out again, but does get the meld off. No detection on these couple of heroes. And Still though, Navi completely controlling the map at this point. Just playing on the Dire side, farming up the Dire's resources. 
Crystallize all by his lonesome does not feel threatened with the Lincolns. More than fair for him to feel that way. Does make it over back to reconvene with his team, however, in general. Looking to finish off this tier 2 alongside his siege creep bottom. Will be able to secure the last hit. Going for the Radiance here. That is a luxury item if I've ever seen one. The Radiance Clockwork. Looks like a Diffusal Blade build up for Crystallize. And all things continuing to come up Navi. Orchid being built into by Dendi. has got that 13 charge Bloodstone right now. And Crystallize, just kind of the only one showing in lane, baiting. They feel that they can counter-initiate with the Clock Hook. Oh, and they try to initiate, but it's just short of the Wyvern. So they will not be able to find a pick there. No matter, though. All the Tier 2s eliminated. Outer Tier Towers in general all eliminated. Or Hala Ares and Navi, you know, with Deep Vision in each of the lanes. Just continue to press forward. One on the Shrine for the TP. So really, it's just a matter of waiting for Roche for them, it feels. Two minutes until that happens. But they jump forward, looking for Dendi. Blood Rage will be there in time. They Blood Rage him up as well. Mel Strike is there, and the Rupture. And Dendi, more than likely to fall, will end up dropping here. So the smoke moves thus far has paid dividends for this Hala Ares squad. They get the Mel Strike off onto Roger, but it seemed like it missed because of the Solar Crest. He is still surviving, but only delaying the inevitable. It seems going for the TP up. That Mel Strike does connect. And a two for nil. Or Hala Ares. Meanwhile, though, it does seem like they may want to reinitiate here. Still, though, quite a bit back until the hook shot. They do get the glimpse off, though, beautifully played by Navi as general. Instead of going for the Radiance, picks up the safer pick in the four staff. Gets Seneco forward, who's now going to find the Wyvern as well. Goes for the TPL. Do they have anything? Dendi is there just to kill him off? Not in time. Wyvern does make it out. Hook shot was there, but pretty far away for general, so. Difficult kill for them to attain. They get the Bloodseeker nonetheless, which is a nice kill on the backside of that poor trade where Dendi and Roger went down. Still, though, again, Navi playing very safe, waiting for the Roche, occupying the dire side of the map, picking up their items. You know, only a couple hundred gold away here. Actually, just one creep away now from the full defusal is Crystallize. He'll fly that out. Gotcha. Indeed, he does. And that'll be a big upgrade to their damage. Deso is complete here for Felosha. We saw mid lane him do quite a bit of work on the Enchantress. And it's only going to get worse now with that damage. But still, is it really enough? TA is certainly, you know, the absolute apex of snowballing heroes. And TA has not snowballed this one. Hook shot forward. Not going to land. But they do get the battery assault off with the purge from the Diffusal Blade. That's the big ability there, allowing them to get in range of the Bloodseeker. Crystallize, even pressing forward with the Geminate. Burn a little bit of mana of that Wyvern. And that's going to be 35 seconds of an opening here for Navi. We'll see if they even care to go high ground against this Poison Nova. Actually, Poison Nova down currently. Not sure when that was used. But maybe a bit of an opening for Navi. They look in towards bottom lane, which is a bit of a lower hanging fruit as compared to mid lane. Just the one shrine you know, nearby. Second one there, but a little bit harder to get to. Mid lane, kind of the three shrines surrounding. Crystallize with the Lincoln. Gonna have that pop, but is already under Shikuchi, so difficult to bring down here. Threads finished up by Roger. Looks like he's looking into a Hood of Defiance. Maybe there's a pipe for his squad. Navi just playing this, I wanna say just flat out correctly here. You know, into the Blood Rite, Winter's Curse, Poison Nova, High Ground. They're just going to wait out for Roche. They have complete map control. There's really no rush for them. It's not as if they get, you know, heavily outscaled into the late game. And even if that were the case, they are the ones farming pretty much all the resources on the map. And it's just Ala Ares picking up the scraps, the, the, the creeps that straddle into their base, basically. Crystallize going for a kill top lane, but he's not going to commit too hard to this. Gets Winter's Cursed up. Blood Rite will actually be there. Gets under Sakuchi though and actually dodges the burrow strike, but they do have the detection. 
Sentry Ward on the deck. And Crystallize actually does end up falling. Navi, though, they want to reinitiate here. Cogs will catch one. Poison Nova onto two. They get two kills immediately, though. Now Epicenter flying through. Dendi able to get out of the range of the Blood Rite. And a Static Storm will end up finishing off the Sand King. They do get a, a triple kill for General. But he then ends up dropping a 1,000 gold nearly going the way of the TA. That's a 10 kill godlike, beyond godlike streak. Or general that was now just ended by the TA. She's sitting on 3k gold here. Looking into a hurricane pike. Maybe even just picks up a, a BKB here. Which she'd be very close to getting. So a little bit of hubris perhaps from Navi. They lose one early in the fight in their weaver. Who's a lot of their damage. And they decide to reinitiate anyways. So out of that little trade it was favorable for them. They end up getting the three for two, Venos, uh, Sand King, and Winter's Curse, um, and Winter Wyvern, excuse me, for the Weaver and the Clockwork. But the Clockwork worth a lot of gold. I mean, look at the gold swing here. Net, we're talking 1,500 plus gold going away of the Dire. Everyone with a positive gold gain despite dying on that Dire side. So, anytime you're behind, even a near even trade. Now, heroes wise, it's certainly going to be favorable for you, metrics wise. Though, Finally, the last piece of the puzzle for Navi that they've been waiting for many minutes now. Um, it seems like they've had a big lead in this game since the 14 minute mark. Will be going their way. Going to be a BKB for Crystallize soon enough. He has the cheese now, though. And that's going to make him a lot more difficult to kill. He won't more than likely die just under a blood right, which has really been like the only way they've been able to pick him off. And the Orchid is available for Dendi as well. Meanwhile, General does find a pick. Up in the top side of the map and bottom lane Seneko could be in a little bit of trouble flying vision is there for the wyvern She's able to TP out under the tree lines and they know there's no disruptor Do they want to make a move here still though? There's Aegis and cheese Dendi just out of blood right range will continue to beat on the tower with the Aegis available to him 12 bloodstone charges as well Solar crest is there they do find the hook onto the TA nice bounce back on the cogs else she would have been able to blink out epicenter is going to fly through but there's no real follow-up just yet from the dire side general taking a lot of damage has the blade mail up is able to force down to the low ground now though with the side blades and the right clicks coming through is the ta rupture is there as well general looking for a tp out Gen dendy looking to re-engage on the blood seeker make sure he can't chase with all those thirst stacks nicely played by dendy general still alive here crystallize up through in the back lines does still have the cheese and the time lapse will be able to use the time lapse as he gets down uses the cheese first and the time lapse actually almost killing him off. And it will. And you don't see that happen all that often. Bloodseeker buying back here. They do get the tier 3 here mid lane. Soneko has now joined the fray as well. Dendi going to look to re-engage once again on the TA. Feeling a little bit confident here. Does have three heroes behind him. And the glimpse is there onto the TA. She's down. 80 seconds. No buyback. Winter's Curse does find one it's going to be the enchantress and she will be dropped with the splinter blast coming through on the end silence onto dendy as well he could be in trouble may want to deny himself doesn't get it off so a lot of kills found on the back end for the dire side and still but the the raxes stand for them however they do expend three buybacks all three of their cores a lot of damage done there bit of a misplay from crystallize he uses the cheese first instead of the time lapse and then when he time lapses, he time lapses to the time before he used the cheese. Where he was down very low in health and just ends up dying to the tick damage of the Venomancer. So a little bit of a fail fish there from Crystallize. But either way, a lot of damage done for Navi. They can regroup, take out the shrines with pretty much relative ease. And wait out maybe their BKB purchases. Dendi, he's about 800 gold away from his. Crystallize after dying is a little bit further away. And indeed, that just happened for Navi. Blink, Blood Rite is going to be there. Dendi could be in trouble again. They've been executing this combo so well. And they force him to deny himself. Crystallize, though, looking to re-engage here. Could be in trouble. Need to get out of the way for the glimpse and will. Just going to delay the inevitable here with the cold embrace. Looking for more. Not going to find it. They do find a kill to avenge Dendi, so to speak. But still, Hala Ares... Making some sort of case for themselves here. Looking at the Radiant Vision. Trap actually scouting the clock. Nicely placed there by the TA. Boom, there it goes. General looking for someone. Just queuing up the hook shot. Not going to find it though. TA a hard hero to hook into as well. Has both force 
and blink. Gotcha. So could have gone for the BKB as I mentioned before. Um, but, you know, BKB doesn't necessarily protect you all that much against the clock blade mail. So a bit of the wiser choice maybe here from Velocia going for the force staff instead. Just get out of that cogs, get onto a better target. Navi still about 700 gold away from their crystallized BKB. They are going to smoke it. Seemed like out of dire range. Vision range. Maybe just within it though. They are playing very safe right now. They do have sentries up on the high ground. Not going to see anything though while these heroes are smoked. Rocket Flare does scout the Wyvern. Hookshot not going to connect. Dendi though. He's going to jump forward anyways. Gets the Orchid off onto the Wyvern and into the Static Storm. The Glimpse will bring her now epicenter flies out it's only onto the disruptor though and he gets forced down to the low ground now the chosen one in trouble poison nova though keeping navi at bay for now get the one kill they force the buyback on the wyvern that is still though maybe a little bit afraid with the poison nova running into them in general in trouble boral strike comes through the lincoln's is there from crystallized but the blood right does connect onto the weaver he gets out to safety however with the friendly force staff sand king could be in a little bit of trouble crystallized nearby soul ring burrow away but only a little bit of a game of footsie there from the sand king two heroes down no buybacks 40 seconds navi's window is nigh and this one no poison nova no rupture available and it looks like they'll regroup heal up and get back in with the nature's attendance but the wave, though, is going to be cleaned up here shortly. So, well, backdoor protection unactive right now. Inactive. Unactive is not a word. I tried my best, guys. They are going to go for the bottom lane where mid is exposed, however. Thank you. Feel a bit easier. Five seconds until Sand King is up. He has a TP available. Glyph is there. Maybe Navi can need to consider backing at this point. General up on the front lines and now the sand king rolling through no epicenter available general gonna pop the preemptive blade mail and a jump forward burrow is gonna find roger and roger will get silenced up gets off the nature's attendance though and surviving for now now dendy finds the wyvern gets the orchid off onto him can they kill him off in time though soul burn it'll be close it does finish him off impetus strikes on the west finish off the ta and on the north side they get the blood seeker with dandy now the epicenter coming through but it seems like a little bit too little too late roger a bit too tanky with the pipe to go down and begging for a courier upgrade is the ta triple kill for dandy looks like that'll be enough to close this one out and king nearby gets the burrow off he'll get the first lane of racks Swarm gonna fly through. Does not connect on the Sand King. General jumping forward with the blade mill and the burrow strike. Catches a battery assault, I should say. Catches a burrow strike. And now the thunder strike should finish off. <laughs> My strikes are with us. <laughs> the Sand King. Heavy committal for that. As Roger walks his way over to the fountain. And now Seneco planting down some BM trees. GG is called. Game one going to go the way of Na'Vi. Looking pretty strong with their new squad. A, a few hiccups up in towards the high ground, but nevertheless.